Good morning, it's Courtney Jimenez, and I'm here with the youth message this morning. Happy Sabbath. I'm glad you're here with me today. We are going to kind of jump off of the Cornerstone uh, Connections lesson. It talks a lot about Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar's dream and everything. And I would really encourage you to go to um, cornerstoneconnections.com and really check this. I'm sorry, cornerstoneconnections.net and really check this out for yourself. It's got a great study in it, and I'm just gonna do an abbreviated little thing, kind of jumping off of the lesson. So you most likely know um, about Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and Daniel was the only one to not only interpret it, but he knew what the dream was without Nebuchadnezzar having to tell him. So that's pretty impressive. That's what proves to Nebuchadnezzar that Daniel's dream is legitimate and that he's not, you know, just some random guy like pretty much all the other people were that we're serving Nebuchadnezzar. So um, what's really interesting about this is this talking about prophecy and, and, you know, what the different parts of this statue mean. And part of why I'm not going in depth with that is because it can get so in depth and it's really amazing. And I want you to study it on your own. I just want to hit some basic core um, powerful points with you today so that you're not stuck watching an hour and a half video. Okay, so Hebrews 11.1. 1. Let's look at Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. I'm going to read that again, okay? Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. And when we look at this statue and we know prophecy and we see the kind of world we're living in right now, we have hope and assurance. We have hope for the things that we know are to come. God has revealed these things in his word. He's told us what to expect. And sometimes it's confusing to understand. And I struggled with that for a long time. Why is, revela re revela why is revelation in particular so difficult to understand? And what I've come to realize is that Jesus says, those with ears will hear, right? And those with eyes will see. People who are seeking to understand God's word, that genuinely want to know the truth, and that genuinely care, are going to be able to go through that. It's just like Jesus' parables. Some people, the parables just went over their head, but that was really because they didn't care. Even the disciples struggled with the parables, and we look at them, and we studied them so much that it's like, well, that was such an obvious story, such an obvious metaphor. How could they not get it? Well, Revelation is probably the same thing for us, right? So if we're seeking diligently to understand and study, God's going to reveal that to us, and I believe he has. Um, but I love this verse. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for. We're confident in Christ. One reason we can be confident in Christ is all of the prophecy that he fulfilled. He fit the bill perfectly for every requirement for the Messiah. Assurance about what we do not see. It's assuring. God is constantly telling us where he is, what he's doing, what to expect. And most powerfully right now in our life is the Holy Spirit, right? Working with us presently in us, in our hearts. That's incredible. That's so incredible. So this is assurance. We have this assurance for what we don't see. So we know where we're at now and we know where we're going. And we know these things based off of the fulfillment of things that were predicted before. Does that make sense? And I think it's really cool how um, we see that Jesus is the one who was and is and is to come. Truth and revelation, not the book, but just kind of revelation and understanding in scripture is, was, is, and is to come. And so it's really important to keep seeking always because we still have that is to come, right? That is to come is still going. And we have that assurance that things keep going. I mentioned in a midweek minute video recently talking about fog and I was jogging and this fog was over the bridge and I couldn't see the other side. I knew that there was solid land on the other side of this bridge, but I couldn't see it. 
my faith in what I can't see, my assurance in what I can't see is what got me across the bridge, right? Or else I wouldn't have crossed it. So it's similar. We know that there's a finish line ahead. We know Christ is returning. And we know that if we say, hey, yes, I, I, I want you. He's got us. We're going up with him. It's amazing. We have assurance of that fact. Romans 1.17 says, For in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. What is living by faith? How do you live out faith every day? This can be put into practice by I think one of the most important things is following the Ten Commandments. Not in the sense that we're looking at a list of rules, but in the sense that we are loving and serving God and loving and serving people, right? This is how Jesus split the Ten Commandments into two great commandments, God and people, right? Um, all of the commandments can be broken into serving and loving God, and all of the second half are serving and loving people, right? So no other gods before me, name in vain, those sort of things. This goes to God and not killing and adultery. Those go to people and so on. Um, and I love how Sabbath kind of does both, right? It's a holy day to God to serve and worship him, but it's also a special day for us to serve and to love and to rest. So neat how he does that. So in our daily life, living up to those Ten Commandments to the best of our ability is living in faith. And it's not that we believe these works or actions are doing anything for our salvation, but it's this faith of knowing on the other side there's more. There's more that's been promised, and God has promised to be good to us and to rescue us, right? He's rescuing us. And so living out these commandments is living out your faith. You trust God and you trust what Christ said is true. And so following him, right? Following him is how we can live out our faith. And what has he instructed us to do to follow? And that's where I believe the Ten Commandments, as in the two great commandments, not the the you know, the ceremonial Levitical laws, the loving God and loving people principles, that's how we can live out our faith. And another thing is just constantly walking in God's will, which I recently talked about is not specific actions or decisions, but giving yourself fully to God in that you are submitting to him in every decision, in every action. You are living up to Christ's expectations intentionally. Now, are you going to mess up? Yes. Are you perfect? No. Is this always going to be plausible? Absolutely not, because we're sinful humans, and that's why we need Jesus in the first place. But as far as living in faith, that's what we should strive for, right? We're going to make mistakes, and that's okay, but we don't want to intentionally turn away from God so that grace might abound, right? Like Paul talks about, should you sin more so grace may abound? And then he says, no, of course not. Of course not. But we have to make sure we have this balance of understanding that following God and walking in faith is very, very holy and very special and something that we should strive for each and every day. But we have to make sure we understand, too, that we're, we're imperfect and we are going to mess up. But what's amazing that God is forgiving and merciful, and anytime we screw up, He's right there. He is not skipped a beat. He is patiently waiting for you to grab back onto his hand, to take one more step in his direction, to climb one more rung of the ladder, to get closer to him. So giving God permission, giving him permission, isn't that an interesting phrase? Give God permission to guide your future and that you can fulfill his plan for your life. And like I've said before, you know, I think plans in our life that God has for us has more to do with the way that we serve him and the way that we serve others than specific actions like becoming a doctor or a missionary. But those plans kind of fall into place when we seek to do what God would like us to do, when we seek to live out his gracious disposition in our own life. So I love that phrase, give God permission, give God permission today to 
work in your heart and in your life and bring you up, elevate your, your faith in your daily walk with him. Hey guys, let's pray. Father, you're so good to us. I thank you for your many blessings. I thank you that we have hope and assurance um, in scripture. And I ask that you bless each person listening today. Help us to understand as we study Daniel the rest of the week and the statue, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Lord, I ask that you be with us as we seek um, answers to these things. I know that you have given us the ability to understand things like Daniel and Revelation. I just ask that you give us the patience and, and the fortitude and the faith and assurance to push through any difficulties we might have with understanding those aspects of scripture. Lord, you're so good. I thank you for everything you've given to us. Bless us the rest of this day. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Okay, you guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I tried to keep it short and sweet. I hope you have a fantastic week, and I'll see you next time.